praise God for who you have been to us, God, and who you are, and how you're still moving in us, God. Hallelujah, God. You're our strength. You're our joy. You're our peace, God. You are. Strange. 
Yes, God. Peace like no other. Peace like no other. It reaches to me. And you are love. Love like no other. Love like. pray father we thank you now for this moment for this time for this space and this opportunity to give your name the honor glory and praise we pray now oh god that you would touch both the hearer and the preacher that we would all be transformed into doers of your word lord let your voice be heard let your word be proclaimed that your will would be done on earth, in our communities, in our households, in our lives, and in our livelihoods as it is in heaven. We thank you now for this opportunity to be in worship with one another. We thank you now, O oh God, in the matchless, marvelous, majestic name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. And all the children of the Most High said amen and gave God some praise in the house. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I thank God for you being with us on today. I thank God for your presence in the sanctuary. And I want to invite you back to our thematic text for this year the year of restoration nehemiah chapter 2 we are moving forward now into chapter 2 we're going to get revved up to go into chapter 2 today but we're not going to make it that far for we're actually going to hang out in between the chapters of 1 and 2 as we review and get ready to progress through nehemiah some more Nehemiah chapter 2 we will be in Nehemiah one way or another all year long so by the end of 2021 we're all going to become well acquainted with Nehemiah Nehemiah chapter 2 verse 1 simply says this and it came to pass in the month of Nisan in the 20th year of King Artaxerxes when wine was before him that I took the wine and gave it to the king now I had never been sad in his presence before amen I'd like to speak to you from this text and from the subject be still be still you may be seated be still this week we witnessed yet a, another transitioning transition and passing of a matriarch of a trailblazer in miss cecily tyson she was groundbreaking in Hollywood. She paved the way for serious black actors and opened the door for so many people behind her. She refused to take parts or roles that were demeaning to black folk and urged her colleagues to join in her standard and to not debase or degrade themselves in order to find work. She held to her convictions. As long as the money was flowing, it's easy sometimes to hold to your convictions, but when people don't want to compensate you for your standards, when people 
want to push you beyond what God has called you to do and who God has called you to be, are you willing like she did to leave money on the table? She was notably critical of shows and movies that stereotypically cast black characters as criminals, servants, or immoral people. She determined within herself that even if she was poor and destitute, she would still be represented with dignity. She stuck to her values, and even in her 90s, she was still a major influence in the world. She won three Emmys and many awards for civil rights and women's groups, and at 88 became the oldest person to win a Tony for a 2013 Broadway role in a revival of Horton Foote's The Trip to Bountiful. In 93, she won an honorary Oscar and was introduced into the American Theater Hall of Fame. In 2018, into the Television Hall of Fame. And last year, she even took home the Peabody Award for Career Achievement. But in her book, she wrote something that I thought was real telling and really helps us to even understand what Nehemiah was dealing with and how it is that we ought to be still. She wrote in her book, despite all of her accolades and accomplishments, that yet I am also the church girl who once rarely spoke a word. I am the teenager who sought silence in the verses of an old hymn in which she named her book after. An old hymn that simply says these words, just as I am, without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou biddest me to come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come, I come, just as I am. Though tossed about with many a conflict, many a doubt, fighting and fears within, without, O Lamb of God, I come, I come, just as I am, and waiting not to rid my soul of one dark blot, to thee whose blood can cleanse each spot, O Lamb, of God, I come, I come. She was rooted with a faith. This hymn reminds us of the hope that we have in Jesus Christ as we continue to fight, to fight against this COVID-19 virus that continues to grow. And what we are doing in the middle of all that's happening and going on is we are claiming restoration. We are speaking it. We are believing it. And by faith, we are reaching for it in this year, 2021, because that's what this text teaches us to do. Every month, one way or another, I will bring us back to Nehemiah. And since it's been a few weeks since we were last with Nehemiah, let me rem remind you of where we left off. The book of Nehemiah begins with Nehemiah inquiring with his brother and some of those who had returned from Jerusalem on the state of the people back in the homeland. The city had been destroyed and people had been in exile for 50 years, but now 80 years had passed by with them having been able to return back to Jerusalem, yet the wall of Jerusalem was still in rubble. The wall was needed because without it, there would be no protection. They were vulnerable from enemy attack and even wild animals attacking. Without the wall, there was little protection. Without the wall, other nations would not see them as a superpower or any kind of political force. Without the wall, they would be laughed at and seen as insignificant. Without the wall being built, people would have no hope and would fear that there was no brighter tomorrow. 
Without the wall, the people were in distress. They were in fear. They were scared. And they were living in pain. We're in a similar predicament right now. COVID-19 has presented a crisis and it seems that as soon as we think we are moving forward, we get more bad news that makes it appear that we're moving backwards. Every week that passes, we are getting prayer requests from members that have either con contracted the virus, have been exposed to someone who tested positive to the virus, or experiencing further complications from having had the virus, or are praying for a miracle for a loved one who is in a predicament and gasping for air because of the virus. Just like Nehemiah's people in Jerusalem, until we are able to have a proper defense against this pandemic, our economy, our families, our places of employment, and even our churches are unable to safely move forward and rebuild and pursue the restoration of our civilization because there's no protection. Many of us are in this place of distress and reproach and it seems as if it's a never-ending saga. It's like it followed us into our new year. Our teenagers are missing out on school events, celebrations and things that should be memorable moments are passing them by. Parents of small kids are desperate to find a place for self-care for them and their kids. We are unable to collectively grieve those who transitioned. The COVID-19 crisis is worsening our mental health crisis. And now we have new strands like the UK, Brazilian, and South African strands that are far more contagious. The vaccines are being rolled out far too slowly and lacking quantity to properly vaccinate the public. Just like Nehemiah, we feel the pressure of the moment, the fear of not knowing how to overcome and the weight of not knowing when this will be over. And we sit in the same predicament as the people, realizing that at the end of the day, if God doesn't do it, that we are helpless without God doing something, that we can't make it unless God steps in and does something about it. Just like Nehemiah, we are sitting in the predicament of prayer, crying out, saying, God, if you don't do it, there is no hope. Upon the reception of the news, Nehemiah prayed and fasted and cried out to God. And that is exactly what we are doing in this season. We are fasting and praying and crying out for restoration. We are confessing our wrongs and our sins, turning from negativity and towards God and asking that God's divine will be done. We are seeking the presence of God and inviting Jesus Christ into our lives with full permission to rearrange, redecorate, reinvigorate whatever he wants to do to do it. Because we are living in the preamble of restoration. The place of waiting and praying. Waiting and praying. Chapters one and two begin with a date stamp. Chapter one says in the month of Chislev and chapter two says in the month of Nisan. It was in Chislev that Nehemiah heard the bad news and began to pray and God heard his prayer. But it wasn't into the month of Nisan that God moved on the king and work began to happen to address the very thing that Nehemiah was praying and crying about. That is a difference of four months. It means that for 16 weeks, 112 days, 2,688 hours, over 160,000 minutes and 9.5 million seconds that Nehemiah was just stressed out praying and crying and fasting. Four months 
without an answer from God four months wondering when this would be over four months believing and hoping when you are living in the preamble of restoration the posture you must take is stillness see there's not much that's said other than the time because there wasn't much to document that was going on in Nehemiah's life. See, we can conclude that how chapter one ended is all that happened in between chapter one and chapter two. There was nothing new to report because there was nothing new that was happening. The same distress that Nehemiah felt when he first heard the word was the same distress he was experiencing four months later. And rather than write down a depressing narrative of the same old, same old happening day after day, turning on the news, seeing the same thing reported day after day, listening to friends and calling and praying for the same thing day after day, Nehemiah just concludes chapter one saying, this is where I was and change didn't happen until Nisan. Change didn't happen when Nehemiah wanted it to happen. I know that we want to get up and do, move fast and quickly restore life back to the way things were in 2020 before the pandemic even hit. But the first move is stillness. Nehemiah understood that there is often a season of prayerful stillness before divine movement. There is often a season of prayerful stillness before divine movement. Why is it that Jesus walked this earth for 30 years before his ministry really started? There is a season of prayerful stillness before divine movement movement there is a season of preparation before restoration we see this often in the bible and consistent when God's people are in need of divine intervention exodus tells us stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Ruth informs us to sit still until you know how the matter will turn out. And Psalms teaches us to be still and know that he is God. When you are in the pit of despair, desperate for divine restoration, we must stand, sit, and be still. Standing still means there's not much movement but you are trusting in the one who is enabling you to stand. Standing still means that in this season, it may require all your brain power, tenacity, and energy just to get up and stand up without even moving forward. It can be difficult to stand when your legs are fatigued from standing for so long. But in this season of prayer and fasting, you have to be willing to stand with little movement. There were no conversations with the king about Nehemiah's pain before this moment. There was nothing done to address his concern. Before this no moment, no, all Nehemiah was doing for a season of four months was standing still. It was Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. who famously said, change does not roll in on the wheels of inevitability, but comes through continuous struggle. And so we must straighten our backs and work for our freedom. A man can't ride you unless your back is bent. Change does not come on the wheels and inevitability, but through continuous struggle. So in your struggle, 
to stand still, know that your struggle is actually what's changing you. See, I'm not struggling, I'm changing. And, 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 and the struggle is what's giving me the strength to embrace my change. See, a butterfly struggles to make her way out of the cocoon. But if the butterfly didn't struggle to break the cocoon, then her wings wouldn't be strong enough once she gets out to fly. And you've got to understand that the stillness of the cocoon, the isolation of the cocoon is giving you the strength so that when God brings you out, you don't fall to the ground. When God brings you out, you can soar. I'm still in these four months. I'm still in this moment, but I'm still because I'm in the struggle of building my strength. I'm in the struggle of making sure I can soar. I'm in the struggle of being built into what God has called me to be. See, a caterpillar doesn't mind the stillness of the cocoon or the struggle to break free because they know that once their wings are strong enough, they will see their freedom and they'll be able to soar. We must learn how to struggle the right way. Because your struggle is designed to change you into all God has called you to be. If it wasn't for the struggle of Jesus carrying the cross, the struggle of him being beaten, the struggle of him being bruised to the point where somebody else assist him, and if it wasn't for the struggle of crying out, saying, God, why have you forsaken me? The struggle of praying the night before in Gethsemane, concerned about being able to even fulfill the will of God. If it wasn't for the struggle, then there would be no salvation. But because of the struggle, because of the press, because of the push, because of the pull, because of the tug, we all vicariously claim victory through Jesus. See, I'm not struggling, I'm growing. See, 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 struggle with purpose equals growth. When we struggle without purpose, that's when it's harmful and dangerous. When you struggle in your standing still, it's because God is doing a work on the inside of you. And we must devote significant energy and attention to allowing God to work. And we must be still. Back when I had the need for a barber, there was an important contribution that I had to make each and every time I went to get a haircut. And that was I had to be still. Particularly when the barber would get the edges and start lining up the hairline. As a matter of fact, they'd put the other hand on top of your head just to make sure you don't move because if you're not still, then the barber can't perform his or her greatest work. Stillness gave the barber the optimum environment necessary to properly cut, shape, and trim to perfection. If you made the wrong move, it didn't matter how skillful the barber was, 
how much experience he or she had or even how much you were paying them if you could not be still in the chair they would mess up your hair God is saying I need you to get still because I'm trying to line you up I need you to sit still because I'm trying to line you up for the promotion. Sit still, I'm trying to line you up for increase. Sit still, I'm trying to line your marriage up. Sit still, I'm trying to line your gifts and talents up. Sit still, I'm trying to edge you up, shape your life, and form you into something that you'll be proud and happy to see when you look in the mirror. Nehemiah understood that the great architect of the universe verse was going to address the brokenness and distress of his people but first he had to sit still stand still be still stand still stand still in your finances struggling the right way sacrifice some of the things you could have right now prioritize doing things God's way and watch the Lord move you from still struggle to a force in motion stand still stop trying to keep up with the Joneses the Jacksons and start trying to follow Jesus in this season stand still Stop trying to rush into another relationship when the last one just ended. Amen, somebody. That was for somebody. Stand still. We have a tendency to believe that if we could just fill in the blank, if I could just get this, if I could just have that, if I could just be there, then everything would work out. But my brother, my sister, I'm here to tell you that Paul has taught us that when we have Christ, we're able to be content right where we are. That when we have Christ, we're able to find peace in the season that we are in. And when we find that peace, God moves us from from blessing to blessing and glory to glory. Sometimes it's hard to stand. Because the problem with standing and standing still is that you still feel all your pain. Nehemiah had not gotten over this. Nehemiah for four months had been going through the motions of still fulfilling his responsibilities at work going through the motions of still trying to be faithful going through the motions of still praying and being diligent and faithful going through the motions and trying to put on a good face because it was understood that you don't want to put the king in a bad mood but just like what happens with unresolved issues Eventually, Nehemiah couldn't even hide it. And it showed up on his face. Nehemiah was so distraught and hurt that he was still noticeably in pain four months later. He could no longer mask it. The problem in waiting and being still is that sometimes you hurt while you wait because feeling is a part of the healing. I like the way I saw it in a post on Instagram and I wish I knew who the original author was of this and I had to tweak it a little bit to make it a little more appropriate, but I think you'll get the message. The message is you cannot sex, smoke, drink, shop, or work away your pain. You just have to feel it, let it run through you, let it make you stronger and move on. Rock bottom will teach you lessons that mountaintops never will. Rock bottom will teach you lessons that the mountaintop never will. Struggle will teach you lessons that the mountaintop never will being in lack will teach you lessons that having plenty never will being down will teach you lessons that being up never will as a matter of fact you will not appreciate the view on the mountaintop unless you've been to your rock bottom 
You will not appreciate the mountaintop of your marriage unless your marriage has hit some rock bottom. I, I wish I had a witness in here today. You will not appreciate the mountaintop of your professional career unless your career has been rock bottom you will not appreciate the food that's on the table the clothes that are on your back the money that's in the bank unless you had to tread on the rock bottom of being broken the rock bottom of not having enough the rock bottom of having to beg for food just to feed the family the rock bottom of wondering how the lights are going to stay on the rock bottom of wondering how you're going to make it out the rock bottom will teach you lessons that the mountaintop never will Nehemiah has had it good he's had it great but he's having a rock bottom moment none of his gifts that he has are getting rid of the pain he's experiencing none of the money he has is getting rid of the pain that he is feeling not even his title his clout and even his relationship with the king for four months has been able to do anything about his pain The season is difficult because it forces us to carry what hurts us. It forces us to feel what we've been running from. It forces us to experience what we've been hiding and masking. In our household, I've, I've felt powerless at times watching my wife who's grieving the death of her mother have no time to even address that with herself because she's caring for a seven-year-old a five-year-old a one-year-old and a grown man And as her husband, I feel powerless because I can't resolve what hurts her. All I can do is be present with her in the pain. I can't make it stop. I can't bring her mother back, but I can sit still with her. And as a man who's used to figuring it out, used to making it happen, used to figuring out a way to make a way. I realize in this moment I have to accept the rock bottomness of this feeling and I can't run from it. I can't outwork it. I, I can't fix it. I've just got to be there with her and be still. Because God is with us in the stillness. See, when you truly are walking by faith, God brings a calmness to the heart that keeps us from rushing about trying to do things in our own strength. Because you cannot do in your own strength what only God can make happen. And when you realize that you are powerless, that's when you will recognize that God is all powerful. And you rather have God's power than your limited strength any day. See, 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 I, I, I remember this week when my wife was having a rough night but we were still and by the next morning she felt better she, she came out saying I, I, I had a rough day but I don't know what it is I, I just feel better because if you feel you can heal because God is with us in the feel and the heal see we want circumstances to change but we don't want to be changed there is a work that God is doing on you while you are waiting so that you can handle the blessing of what you are waiting for. 
There are times where God is needing to work on you so that you can properly handle the blessing that God has for you and that you have been praying for. Our trust and faith in God is what allows us to be still while we wait. And sometimes, just like Ruth informs us, we have to sit still and know not only that God is God, but we need to sit still until we know how the matter will turn out. Sometimes we freak out before the matter has even turned out. We would get all angry and bent out of shape only to find out that we were overreacting about what could have happened. But not what actually happened. Amen, somebody. I know I'm not the only one. See, stillness is a place of being. It is a determination to find contentment with the season that you are in and accepting that where you are is preparation for where God is taking you. And where God has purpose for you to be. That's why Paul told the Philippian church, I've learned to be content in whatever situation I'm in. I know what it means to be in need. I know what it means to have plenty. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all things. Through Christ who gives me strength. The statement, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, is a statement attached to contentment. It's a fact that I can be still because God is giving me strength to be still. It actually sometimes requires more strength and energy to stand still than it does to keep moving and doing. Oh, I wish I could hang out there. It takes more strength sometimes just to sit down and, and worship at the feet of Christ than it does to move around and try and make stuff happen. But watch people who aren't willing to be still and allow God to work on them. Because when we do not allow God to work on us, we won't be prepared for the work he has for us. We will claim that everyone else is the problem when we are the constant. If the same scenario plays out job after job, relationship after relationship, ministry after ministry, person after person, it's time to get still and let God go to work and deal because there's only one constant in the equation. Nehemiah shows us that weeping and praying must be followed up with praying and waiting. And I love the way it was put in our Temple Cleanse Consecration devotional this week by the author Sonia Riccati, who frames this in such a powerful way. She says, accept what is, let go of what was and have faith for what will be. As I close today, I want to encourage you to follow after these words and to do what Nehemiah must have done in order to prepare for what we're getting ready to journey through in chapter 2. Accept what is. Let go of what was. But have faith, have faith in what we'll meet. We must have the faith to accept the reality of whatever is. However unfavorable it may be, and we must let go of whatever was. Because whatever was no longer is. Jerusalem's walls are down on the ground. They were built. They were strong, but that was. Except where they are right now. Except the predicament that we face right now. But have faith in what will be. 
People are sick. Money is tight. Food is scarce. People are afraid and worried, Nehemiah, but have faith in what will be. Because what faith does is it turns what will be into what is. God specializes in turning what will be into what is. Lazarus was dead, but because of faith, Lazarus is alive. Over 5,000 people were hungry, but because of faith, they are fed. The three Hebrew boys were in danger, but because of faith, there is no smoke smell among them. Jesus was hung on a cross, was buried in a tomb. He was pierced in his side. He was hung, but he is alive. He is at the right hand of the Father. What I am going to do in this season is I am by faith going to talk about what will be but claim it as it is. I was sick but I am healed. I was depressed but I am in peace. I was stressed but I am experiencing joy. I was down but now I am up. I was lost but now I am found. I was blind, but now I am with vision. I was sick, but I am healed. Was down and out, but now I'm up and in. I was struggling, but now I'm found in Christ. See, I found out that His grace is sufficient. If I keep on praying, keep on pressing, come on Nehemiah, keep on working, keep on pouring that wine for the king at his table. Keep on praying and keep on pressing, keep on fasting, not just one day, not just 30 days, not just 60 days, not just 90 days, but keep on until change comes. Keep on butterfly until the cocoon is gone. Keep on pressing on and do the very best you can. Stand still, be still, sit still, feel the salvation of the Lord. See God is at work in ways we cannot see. Be still, let him work on the pandemic. Be still, let him work on the economy. Be still, let them work on your ministry. Be still, let them work on your marriage. Be still, let them work on your mind. Let them work on your heart. Let them work on your body. Just as I am poor, wretched, blind, sight, riches, healing of the mind. Yeah, all I need in the I find. Oh God, oh Lamb of God, I come, I come. Do I have anybody who wants to come to the Lamb today? The Lamb who was bruised for our iniquity. The Lamb whose healing is at our disposal. The Lamb that was slain for our sins. Do I have anybody who wants to be still and know? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. That He is God. Nehemiah, be still. I know you're hurting. I 
know you're stressed. I know you wish that you could solve the pain of those who you love. But Nehemiah, God hears your prayers. Be still. Keep doing the work that you're supposed to do. And let God work on the inside of you. Father, in the name of Jesus, you know us so well. You know our minds and you know our struggles. You know our pain. You know our patterns. And let, let you still bid us to come to you. You know our distress. You know, God, how hard this season is for all of us. And yet, Lord, we by faith know you are at work in ways that we cannot see and in ways that we cannot possibly understand. But we know your will is to prosper us is to help us, is to heal us, deliver us, set us free. And to see that your justice is served. And so, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, in the midst of this very convicting word, help us to be still. Help us not to try and Take everything into our hands and fix what only you can control and help us to center and keep you the focus of our hearts and our minds to trust in you with all of our hearts and lean not to our own our own understanding for those who are in need of salvation just simply say Father I am a sinner and I confess now that Jesus Christ is my Savior he's my Lord I believe today that he died for me and that he rose with all power that he sits at the right hand of the Father say I'm saved I'm saved I'm saved I'm saved for those who need to rededicate their life to the Lord if you've drifted away just say Father I recommit my life my heart my soul my mind my whole person to you Jesus you are my savior you are my lord and I'm committed to you Father as we sit still for a moment to gather the strength we need for the journey of restoration as we sit still in sorrow and witnessing the tears fall down our faces as we sit still and feel we pray now that your healing would come bring comfort to those who are grieving Bring healing to those who are hurting. Bring deliverance to those who are shackled up and bound. 
Renew minds, O God. Cleanse hearts. Help us to let go of what was. Grieve the death of what was so that we can embrace what faith says now is and that which shall be. Bless everyone under the sound of my voice, please, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And all the blessed children of God said amen, 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 and amen. Come on and give the Lord a hand, a praise. Be still. Be still. This is such a challenging word in these days and time. But challenge is what causes us to grow. Be still. Be still and watch God do a work in us, through us, and for us. Come on, if you are blessed by the Lord today, let's give God one more hand of praise. Come on at home. I want, I, I want to hear you. I want to hear you. Put those hands together. Even at home. I want to take a moment. We, we haven't done this since we have been out, but we're going to start doing this each and every month. If you are celebrating a born day in the month of January, or if you celebrated a birthday in the month of January, I want to invite you to type into the chat section or type in there someone that you know whether it's a family member a loved one come on and fill up the chat section with the january birthdays if your birthday's in january and you are present you can go ahead and stand to your feet because you were born in january oh, deacon francis was born in in january oh hallelujah hallelujah the january birthdays amen everybody say happy birthday Amen. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to everybody who is chatting it up in the chat section. If you are celebrating an anniversary, if you said I do, I do, I do for the rest of my life to death, do us part for richer or poor, for better or worse, all those good things. If you got married in January, come on and stand to your feet or put it in the chat section so that we can acknowledge that you are celebrating an anniversary and make sure you put in how many years it has been amen and in the chat section whoever has the most years whichever has the highest let us show all kinds of love to that person amen amen and amen i also want to thank everybody for continuing to be present like only you can online and in everything that we're doing and we have been growing as a church I had a great time meeting all of our new members on last Sunday afternoon and I want to encourage you if you gave your life to the Lord if you rededicated your life or if you would like to become a member of Mount Moriah Missionary Baptist Church of North Charleston Charleston County South Carolina I want you to click on the link right there under the subject heading that's going to take you to this page. Scroll down, click the appropriate box that represents your desire, whether you have a need for prayer, you gave your life to the Lord, or you desire to make Mount Moriah your home. Whichever one is appropriate, fill out your information, send it in, and someone from our leadership team will be contacting you. And we look forward to connecting with you, praying with you, and walking with you. Amen, amen, and amen. And at this time, we will prepare to pray over the tithes and offerings that have been given over the course of this past week and on today for those who have given online for those who have dropped it off for those who are mailing it in god bless you we thank you for empowering us to continue to build the kingdom of god right here through mount moriah and at this time we will have the prayer over our tithes and offerings amen
our Father and our God, we give thanks. Lord, we thank those that gave online. We thank those that dropped box, those that sent it your way. But the most of all, our Father, we thank those that give. We give you this back to you that you have given us. These things we ask. These things we give thanks for. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you so much, Dean Maxi. And at this time, we just want to go over your announcements for the week. Amen. Starting off with our student recognition. It's time for us to recognize all of our students. If you have an accolade, if something has happened that you would like to be celebrated about, we need to know about it. Simply submit it by February 12th. All the information is right there on your screen. If you need more time with it, hit the pause button or rewind and come back to it and you will be able to get the information. We look forward to celebrating all of our young people who are making it do what it do as they continue through 2021. We also want to remind you that we are preparing now to celebrate Black History Month. We we already kind of started on today and we will continue to highlight highlight the wonderful history of our people amen so our virtually fam family fun day event will be on Saturday February the 27th that is the last day of the temple cleanse consecration by the way Saturday February 27th did people get excited I just heard a woo and all it will be the last day of the consecration Saturday February 27th from 10 a.m. to 11 30 a.m. it is a wonderful time of celebration and fellowship virtually all of our new members will be recognized at that time and we will be able to officially welcome them and see them and all of that so mark your calendars that is our virtual fun day family fun day black history month saturday february 27th amen and i just want to remind you we are steadily pressing our way through the temple cleanse consecration i want to thank all those who are fasting and pressing we had over 600 people sign up online officially for the consecration come on and give god some praise Amen. If we can get 600 folk praying and fasting, do you know what God's getting ready to do? Do you know how God's getting ready to bless and move? Because 600 plus people are praying and fasting. I want to thank you for your commitment to Christ and for inviting God into your life in such an intentional and sacrificial way. These are times where we need the saints praying. And I want to remind you of this week what we will be cutting out of our diet as we continue to journey along. Somebody say, be still, be still, be, be, be still, be still. Amen. Be, be still, be still, be still. So we are heavy into this right now, days 11 through 17. That's January 29th through February 4th. You should now be up to at least 50 ounces of water. Of course, this is uh, all this is subject to your doctor's approval. Amen. Doctor's approval. Somebody say doctor's approval. Doctor's approval. Amen. Amen. Drink at least 50 ounces of water. Of course, all the sugar and stuff is already out, so you won't be drinking any of that Hawaiian punch and Kool-Aid and Flavor Aid. Amen. Some of y'all know Flavor Aid. It was the off-brand. Anyway, no more fried foods. Add at least five servings of vegetables a day. Five servings of vegetables a day in your meals. Amen. Then when we hit February 5th, those are days 18 through 24. No more white potatoes. No more white rice. No more white bread or white pasta. Amen. You can still have your whole wheat, all that good stuff. And we're moving on up to 70 ounces of water each day. Amen. So say a prayer and bid adieu to the white potato, the white potato french fry, the white loaded potato, the potato in any way that you make it, the hash brown potato. 
just say goodbye. Don't worry, the potato will be there to welcome you back with open arms on February 28th. Amen. <laughs> and amen. I want to encourage you. The Facebook group has been going crazy. I mean, we are supporting and people are posting. It's a great way to just have encouragement and continue to engage with everybody else as we journey through the temple cleanse. So please, please, if you're on Facebook, click on the link and join the Facebook group. If you have not officially signed up, but you are doing it, we just want to know that you're doing it and be able to contact with you. So make sure you go to the temple cleanse site and and we will be walking together in prayer and fasting. Amen and amen. Are you glad you came to worship today? Did you have a good time? Somebody say, be still. L look at somebody and through your mask, tell them, be still, be still, be. Be still, Reverend Jennings, be still, be still. Be still, Sister Downey, be still. We got to be still and know that God is at work. Amen and amen. Once again, I thank you for being here. And as we close out, I invite you to stand and let us just say this old song of the church. Praise him. Praise him. Come on, let me hear it. Oh, praise him. Go ahead. Oh, Jesus, blessed Savior, he's worthy to be praised. Come on, one more time, Rihanna. Praise him. you before we get a benediction Sunday school Sunday school everybody said Sunday school you have all the classes right here available to you we want to encourage you today to go into your class giving God praise when you log in I want your Sunday school teachers to feel like they don't know what's going on because you're just giving God the praise open up your Sunday school class today whether you're a young adult, men, women, family enrichment, regular adult Sunday school, the children, babies, I want y'all opening up Sunday school with praise. Clap your hands, say thank you, Jesus. Wave and shout and just give God glory. Sunday school, Sunday school. Amen. And now to him who's able to keep you from falling, present you blameless before God with exceeding joy. To the all-wise God, our Savior, be all honor, glory, dominion, and power. And all the children of God said, peace, peace, be still. Amen. Amen.